Macedonia under the 50 and this time we're going to talk about the Xbox Live Indie games because on after the 7th of October they will not be able to be purchased on the Xbox 360. So I've decided to, to do mini reviews of, of the, fa the final 25 games released on this service. Let's start this countdown with a game called Multitasking. And this game, well, it's like WarioWare kind of, where you have a very simple mini game. You get another pot, but another screen, and you just have to keep doing them until you mess, mess up. Very simple idea for a game, but plays fairly well, so that's all I can really say about this one. So, number 24 is Off to Seascape Horizon, and this, I don't know if you can call, count this as a game, I mean, you just. Walk around an island and you press a button to change a different colour filter and you just press buttons and and, and some random like quotes show up. I really don't <laughs> get the purpose of this game. It's more like a, a, a interactive demo than an actual game. So game number twenty three is Sexy Flight and Yeah, this is what I'd consider a very bad game. For the indie section because there was this whole stupid mechanic with the indie section that developers would just make games with anime characters on the cover in skimpy outfits and there'd be barely any gameplay to them. It'd be just like point and click, not even depth point and click, they'd be just sell just for the artwork and this is exactly one of these games. And this developer made a few other games like this and there was all equally this rubbish. It's like you just got a bu bunch of people's drawings from DeviantArt just throw them in the background and have a very basic minigame and this was the final game like this on, on, on the entire platform and yeah this is, as you can see it's just it's just Flappy Bird I mean even the character sprite is terrible I mean what on earth is that? just like a bouncing ball with a Yet like upside down, and there's not barely any details in this game whatsoever. It's like, yeah, this game was pretty embarrassing to be honest. <laughs> Next up is number 22, and it's Border Beyond Borders. And this is a snowboarding game, except it's not a snowboarding game because there's no tricks in the game. You just glide around and you just have to like land on the railings and not just fall off to collect items and that's this bit of the entire game. It's yeah. This one's not that very good, <laughs> to be honest. In my opinion. Game number twenty one is something called Yellow Things H D and this is I don't know, it's, it's some weird like physics platform game. It's a bit like Flappy Bird, but not I'm not sure what it's a clone of, but all I can say it's a lot better game than Sexy Flight because there's like some sort of effort put into this one. I'm not very good at it, mind you, but I'm all I can really say about this one. Number 20 is Zombie Adventure, and this is a choose your own adventure story. I mean, it's just text and you just read it and you just have to not die. I don't know, this, I don't know, this seems very empty and very basic, and also. The game crashed on me, so yeah, there's <laughs> that as well. Game number 19 is Avatar Laser Attack, and this is a third person multiplayer focused shooter where you stop laser guns and you shoot Xbox Live avatars. I don't know, this, there's a lot, I don't know, there's probably a lot locked out because you played a demo version of this, but this doesn't look too bad for what it actually is. Though the AI single player is laughably easy to beat, so not a very good game you're playing by yourself. Which is probably going to be the case because I doubt that many people online ever played this, I'm afraid. Game number 18 Block Ops. And this is a, a Call of Duty Zombies clone in 2D, pretty much. Though, though you play as lots of 26 character controls and you play as a stick figure shooting at zombies. It does have a multiplayer mode. So you can actually play single player as well, just against, just against random zombies attacking you. This is kind of average. Game number 17 is, confusingly enough, called Chess Magic Power. Which, 
despite the fact he's clearly a space shooter, where you jump around and you just shoot objects and there's lots of power-ups of range and all that madness. This doesn't actually look that bad as a game, but unfortunately the demo itself is kind of a bit on the short side. Game number 16 is Wizard Rage, and this is another Avatar, Avatar Xbox Live multiplayer focus game where you can play three different wizard classes of wizards with different abilities and spells. Unfortunately enough, the demo itself, and, and pretty much all Xbox Live indie games, didn't have a way to play online without you purchasing them. And, and this game has no off, no, no box included, so essentially the single, all, what you're seeing here is, is, all, is the only single player one in a game, which is just you wandering around the, the empty, empty arena <laughs> with nothing to kill. Yeah, unfortunately, I guarantee you that you did spend money at this. Probably all you'd have to bet to play anyway. Cause I doubt there've been that many people playing it anymore. Game number fifteen is Bubble Boost, and this is a hundred percent complete rip-off of of Taito's Buster Move slash Puzzle Bubble series. The only difference between this one is some of the icons. Bubbles have different picture icons. The backgrounds are obviously different. The music's different. And probably the most different thing about it is. The bubbles themselves are considerably larger than they are in the actual games it's based off. It's, that's all I can really say about this one. Game number 14 is Global Warfare, and this is a Call of Duty clone. You know, it's quite a lot of games that in the games on this service mimics Call of Duty. And it has some kind of multiplayer mode, which I couldn't obviously test out, and there's some AI mode. Where you just where you have one life to shoot all these well, army men, obviously. It's pretty dull to be honest. I don't really think much of this one. Game number thirteen is Jero Neko, and this game has a completely nonsensical and insane story. You play as a cat on a, a razor shaving floating dogs so they don't land in a black hole. I believe this might have been the last Japanese developed game on the service, and well, it's very out there. <laughs> on the plus side, I'd say it's much more fun than some of the previous games listed on this list, but this one actually has some kind of game to it. Alright, game number 12 is called Last Stand, and this is an indie version of the Call of Duty Zombies mode. I believe it was, might only be single pony, but. Actually, it's very slow. It takes way too long to get going. This one, and the enemies start of lack of easy to, to kill, and it's not that entertaining. It's also not very scary either. I mean, it's yeah, it's very dull to be honest. Game number eleven is disease zombie survival horror, and yeah, this this has an online multiplayer mode, but. When the trial couldn't figure out what you're doing it, I mean, I was just walking around the forest and you'd be walking like for like, like 30 seconds, I mean, nothing. There's suddenly some zombies would spawn, <laughs> then they just constantly spawn until you run away from them. I think you need to find a hut, but I can never find a hut. I really don't know. This one's really not my kind of game. I'm not really into these zombie survival like games. And we'll be noticed quite a few of these in, in, in the top 10. Into the final 10 games ever released now, and, and game number 9, 10 is Loot or Die 2. Now, I believe this was by the same developer as Block Ops, but this game is, in my opinion, considerably a better game than Block Ops because it feels like a rapid game there. The enemies to fight, you lots of collectibles. This one's actually okay, it actually functions well as a game. Number 9 is Death Quarter R. And yeah, well, visually looking at this game, yeah, it's a complete shameless rip off of Minecraft. Though the pixel art's a lot more detailed than Minecraft on the characters. Though this is actually, well, it's not really, it's, it's just, it seems a multiplayer mode and all that. The single player, it's kind of like a survival mode. But you have to basically just collect all these objects, flying around objects in the map. And constantly shoot at Terminators, <laughs> and then 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 get to the chopper, and then do another level. 
this surprisingly actually works fairly, fairly, fairly well as a game, this one. Don't know why it needs to look like Minecraft though. Number 8 is... ESP Turing Telekinesis Time. Yeah, that's a very mouthful of a name, but it's kind of a spaceship game where you can where you can freeze time and move objects to change projectiles. It's a vaguely interesting idea, but the one problem is the demo of the game is relatively short. You can let to be under ten seconds. So it's a good idea, but they should have really included more game into the demo of this one. Game number seven is Snake Party. Now, if you like that old mobile phone game Snake, but it's been around years before Snake, it's only a snafu, wasn't it? Well, yeah, anyway, this is the lots of modes in it. It's got up to, local up to four players at once, mission, a mission mode. This is probably the most content I've ever seen in a game based on the simple idea of Snake I've ever seen. So, if you're a really big fan of the game Snake, you probably really enjoy this one. Everyone else, though, well, yeah, you know, try something different. Number six, we've got Avatar Eras Online, and this is another weird, like, M this is essentially a, an MMO <laughs> oh, for the system. It's really kind of odd, this one. I mean, it's got lots of, like, mechanics and all that, and it technically you can play single player still, but this is not really a game you can play in a demo and really have a clue what's going on, because it don't have like a specific demo of the world to like tell you what to do, it just throws you in the game. Not really else to say about this one, it's an online MMO that you can play offline, I doubt anyone, very few people ever played online. Yeah, it's Different, I suppose. It's probably, it's probably, it's technically the final RPG ever made, made for the service. So it's got that going for it. Number, number, number five. We've got Chasing Sticks. Now this is a bullet hell game where you play as a dog with two floating heads. It has controls very similar to games like Kiki Kai Kai or Copy Rocky, as it's also known as. This one's actually pretty good. Also, like a lot of the games, this one's actually available on Steam. And this one on Steam is, is completely free, so I think you need a controller to play it, but this one this is actually by far out of all of the all of these top twenty five listed, this is by far my favourite game of, of a lot of them and one I'd recommend actually playing. Game number four is yet another zombie defence two. And the title pretty much sums up is a zombie defence game, you just defend an area from a bunch of zombies and keep upgrading yourself. You can use your Xbox Live avatar in the game, which, which essentially means it's the actual final game ever on the service to use Xbox Live avatars. It's, uh, I don't know, I think this one's kind of a bit, uh, but it's, that's <laughs> my opinion on it. So, game number three is survival game zombies. And this is a survival game. Which clearly is inspired by Minecraft. I mean, the character models literally just are like Minecraft. I mean, the characters, the sprites have a bit more effort put into them than Minecraft ones, just like the Death Quarter R game for previously. Though, this is not a game I could really get into. I have no clue what I would do when I was playing a demo of this game. Yeah, and even beat, beat a single zombie up nearly killed, nearly wiped me out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, some people probably like this, but. This is really not my kind of game. This is also the final Minecraft ripoff from the final zombie game ever on the service. So, game number two is Caroline's Important Life Diary. And this is some kind of bizarre pixel art game with lots of like really wonky voice acting, and which is probably done by the people who worked on the game. I mean, it definitely doesn't sound that place, but that makes it kind of amusing. Some very bizarre things you do in it. It's like you avoid lasers and you. It's not interactive endings and there's part of the game just run around spitting on people. It's like. Yeah, this one's very different. I give it that one. It's kind of a bit odd. And the final game ever released on the surface is Solaroid's Prologue. So, with Prologue, basically, it sounds like a demo and it's. 
and it's a shooter game. It's not a very interesting shooter game, it's essentially just a, an asteroid clone. I don't know, it, I mean, I literally played it for a while and I literally didn't even, nothing changed through the entire trial I played on this. No, none of the enemies improved, not got any boss fights or anything, just flying around shooting rocks. It was kind of dull, to be honest. It's kind of a shame this is the final game on the service, but this game is also available on Steam in early access, so if you want it there, you can get it there. It looks pretty much the same. So, that was the final 25 games ever released on Xbox Live Indie Games area, or sometimes it's called Xbox Live Community Games, or Xblig for short. And it's unfortunate lots of these games will are not available on any other system. Hopefully someday emulation will come around to save these being, being restored. And yes, a lot of these games was bad, but I still think just because the game's bad still does not mean it should be lost forever. Well anyway, thank you for watching this video.